Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Get ready for Gnosis. Well, I want to cover intelligence versus cunning. Now, I've spoken a wee bit about this in the past, but again, there's so many subjects that should be repeated constantly because nobody really gets it. People listen to things and they say, that makes sense, uh, is Gilligan's Island on? You don't get it, but maybe you should. Maybe it should go in deep into your consciousness being, your inner magical being, your higher self, and kind of age, mellow, because you can't take on truth easily, quickly, and apply it to your life. As a matter of fact, a lot of people agree with truth and then they kind of throw it in the trash can because they don't use it. It's too difficult. It threatens my reality. So, uh, it, the arrogance of uh, mankind is just unbelievable thinking that they are the prime species. They are in control of everything, that they know what's going on and function perfectly within their environment. That certainly that they are the intelligence one because they got a big giant pea pod on the top of their neck with this big giant thing that appears to be called a brain. And people who have little brains uh, ain't too smart. Bigger is better. And of course, this is another uh, pretty arrogant uh, understanding of life in general. It seems to go into everything of life and really is a very primitive man. The bigger your manhood is, the better you are. And apparently this is thought by a lot of people. It's not what you do with it. It's just that, you know, it's good to have a baseball bat size one for what particular reason uh, is really unknown. <laughs> so, um, but let's not get caught up in the real perversion of mankind and of course which goes into uh, human sexuality which couldn't be more screwed up. So the whole idea is that we need to understand the reality of what's going on out there to be arrogant enough to do it. Now mankind and the homo sapiens, the gay, the apes that kind of went somewhere, whatever we are, this hybrid alien pile of poo, um, is the stupidest being in the universe. The stupidest energy. How could you take that to all? You know, we got Coca-Cola and computers and cars. Uh, yeah, <laughs> look at all that stuff. Trash, drinks, uh, internal combustion engines that only a retard would make because it destroys your planet, and all the things that go with it. Computers are good, bad, and indifferent because that's what humankind is. But there's certainly processing information is interesting, but processing what? What is the internet and computers used for? Well, mostly it's used for garbage. And the only reason certain things took off in life is because generally it's all tech, uh, tied to sexuality. Uh, we have DVDs today because of the, um, and a video in general, because people wanted to watch porn at home. Stop. And of course, this is when. And most of computers started off with people doing that. Now, apparently, they claim it's so little, only about 10% of the net. I don't really believe that, but whatever. The bottom line is what great things has humankind done, particularly in uh, the last thousand years or so. And we really haven't made a jump up in any kind of technology except in the last basically 40 years. Before that, everything was pretty much the same. It's amazing how you go back to what you think is modern times, 1990, uh, 1980, 19, uh, 2000. But, you know, most of the things that we're doing today in terms of accessing and uh, scientific breakthroughs and all the other things, which really haven't happened, by the way, nothing has happened in classical science, every physicist will tell you in the last hundred years, nothing has happened. So the whole idea is that uh, we really haven't, right? we've got a bunch of stuff now. We have a lot of information. No, it's too much information. Who do you believe? Um, so when we, since we went to a vacuous understanding where it took a certain elite class to figure anything out, you have to spend all your time in the library. You have to spend all your time going to college. Well, you don't have to do that now. But on the other hand, you're never really going to discipline yourself to do anything unless you're in academia or dumbademia, as I like to call it. You're really not going to spend time doing much research unless you're one of those kind of queer type of people, odd people, uh, that tend to do things that aren't entertainment-based. 
So, and most of us don't. We fall into that. We're tired. What do we want to do? We want to listen to a drab lecture. Well, surprisingly, a lot of people do this to some degree. I mean, I'm surprised how many views um, physicists and everyone else has. Quite a bit, which is kind of interesting. So I don't know if anybody's intellectualizing this or not. Um, but of course, if you want to get some sort of information that has value, you're going to have to go to places like YouTube, uh, which has these things if you want it, as well as stupid things like watching people for hours playing video games or some idiot who makes a short movie that they're, it's so wonderful, he took a picture of his fungus on his foot and he wears funny glasses, hey, yeah, he's an intellectual. Well, everybody's got their own taste. Well, let's get back to intelligence. So the whole idea is people think that this evolution and all the things that we have, and we can point to many things as a society, and none of them work. Is that an intellectual, is that a high intelligent person? We have a high intelligence for what? Well, we can't label intelligence intelligence if it doesn't have a positive outcome. So we know absolutely nothing. What we've done is uh, complicated ourselves with a bunch of bizarre thoughts, and we still don't have any modern thoughts. It's amazing how everything in life, and you've listened to science, what Pericles said and Aristotle, we're going back 3,000 years to ancient Greece, and we think this has value. Oh, what Kant said in 1918 or 1920, whenever the hell that bozo was around, or Schopenhauer, we got all the really psychotic mental cases uh, that people have glubbed onto in the European thoughts. I mean, things, um, and I don't want to get too much into this lecture, I'm going to try and keep this down, but um, the bottom line is, is that we don't know anything. And science is still based on at least a hundred years ago where they keep going to that imbecile Einstein uh, who wrote something in 1918, 1920, and his information came from a hundred to two hundred years prior to that. But we don't have anybody being, you know, we should be throwing away, this should be background information. So what did uh, John Alexander in uh, 2015 say? Because he's the best in the field and has now interpreted it, the garbage from Einstein, Schrödinger, and all these other idiots that all think the same way. They're all programmed. They all come from this same bizarre culture, uh, a culture that is based in the destruction of the human race. But the point is, is that where is the intelligence here? I don't can't really look at anything that's been invented recently that has any great value. And if it does, the last factor comes in, which certainly is not intelligent. Now, I'm assuming in the animal kingdom, the animal kingdom has everything as that the humans do. Uh, they have rapists, they have murderers, mostly primates, by the way, or um, those with the biggest brains, which ought to tell us that the bigger the brain is, the more psychotic and bad it is. Like dolphins who rape people all the time and murder. Uh, primates, chimpanzees in particular, are known for their, mur uh, their murder and rape and has been documented. Now, how frequent this is, we don't know. We certainly know that dolphins are really sexual perverts and they have a constant sexual drive that is probably equal to humans, which means a bigger brain means that you are more stupid, driven by primitive means. So to think in any way, you know, and I, I see this with the ancients and everything else where they talk about, uh, well, the ancients couldn't have possibly figured this out. Well, yeah, the ancients we know. We also have to remember that the pyramids and the Mayan structures weren't really built by the modern people who occupied that. They all said somebody else built it. And as you progress further in the Egyptian, uh, as they get more closer to modern times, the less that's done and they've lost everything. And what a lot of people do because of their evil, stupid, ignorant nature, uh, ultimately cap the capstone to the human reality is corruption. So it means nothing of value. So the more you get closer to modern times, the less that's been done. And then they like to draw pictures on the wall, how it was done, etc. Then the ultimate thing is to say how, and we keep saying how stupid humans are, and I agree to a large extent, but we're making this a uh, stated prophecy and making sure it's fulfilled. 
that aliens made them. Other, we couldn't have possibly figured out how this could done. Well, talk to the Coral Castle guy who moved stones bigger than the Egyptians all by himself. And then people want to make up excuses of how he did this. Well, I don't care how he did it. It was radio waves, store. He put together this thing with some tubes and a pulley, and he got like a 60-ton block and moved it. And we all know that. Okay, well, repeat it. Well, we can't do that. We got to go to the physicist, and the physicist said they hasn't found nothing. Well, dumb guy, that's right. Uh, you should be the head of Harvard. You probably are. So the whole idea is that um, this is what we're looking at in the reality that's out there. So, um, and we want to say that somebody else did this. Well, I do believe in the massive intervention of retarded aliens who have messed up planet Earth horribly, either deliberately or because they're just incompetent. After all, we got a lot of their ships that crashed and their bodies... So, days far from perfect. So, the whole idea, and they didn't seem to come back and get them. Like, we don't like to leave our bodies around, but they don't seem to come back and get some of them, even though I know they do in lots of instances. But the point is, is that that is, so it's somebody else did it. Another stupefying of the human race, which has becoming a self-fulfilled prophecy. Now, this is a very difficult and hurtful way to think. Uh, first of all, you think you're the most superior when you're not even close. Then secondly, you contradict this by saying how stupid you are. You can't figure nothing out. We need machines, you know, the singularity. Uh, because they're going to be so much better than us. Well, for particular tasks they are. Uh, the bottom line is it takes a human brain to make a, um, uh, an actual microscope. You can't modify your eye to do that, so you're going to have to use a machine. This is just common sense. But the bottom line is that it's a human that creates it. Now, as long as we continue to put us, and the fact is, this is all done by religion to make you inferior, so you pay them and believe their stupidity so they can dominate and destroy you and rape you and everything else that religion does. On the other hand, we have to be very careful to be saying how superior we are against a... Um, and, of course, this is perpetrated by religion as well, so that we dominate or murder everything on this planet. Um, uh, because the Bible says that we have domination over animals, we're able to kill them. And this goes from killing everything. Now, what's interesting is that as a species, everything we eat has been alive at one time or another, except which was pointed out to me recently, uh, interesting, salt. Salt, of course, you could say that was alive as well. I believe everything is alive, so it means that it has an energy factor. And, of course, there's level of life. But the bottom line is that plants are alive and everything else. But, you know, again, it's level. There's a difference. But as long as you energetically look at things, uh, no matter what you're doing, you're killing a certain energy level. That has to change as a species. Uh, and, of course, that's what we do. And this type of destruction for so-called uh, self-preservation uh, um, permeates our thinking. And as such, we destroy everything we get involved in, not thinking that, you know, maybe we ought to do this right so that we can survive later. But we don't care. We're parasitical in nature. Again, another reason to show that uh, how imbecilic the human race is. Now, one of the things I've heard for years and years is how stupid animals are. They can't figure out this. They can't figure out that. Well, this is absurd. Humans know a lot of stuff. All 99.9% .9 of what you know is valueless in the bigger picture. You know what a chair and a desk and a computer is. At least most people do. You know, a lot of people don't even use furniture. Uh, particularly places like Afghanistan and other places where the great trillion-dollar American military can't handle people that don't have toilets. They sit on the floor on a rug. So a lot of people don't even have that. So you may not even, if you came from Afghanistan, you may not even know what a chair is. That's your culture. So, but let's get past that kind of distinct thinking to the fact that we, you have stuff because it's based on what your society tells you. That's why I brought up Afghanistan. Afghanistan societies don't tell you to sit in chairs. You sit on the floor. Maybe 
on a pillow, cross leg. So, again, it's society based. So, everything that we know is based. It has no value any place except on some places or even most places on this earth. A lot of people still sit and sleep on the floor, as Japanese do, and traditional Japanese hotels and so forth, which I have stayed at. You sleep on a mat on the floor. So, but let's get past those interesting little tidbits I like to throw in. But the point is, is that you have information that's only based in your particular world. And other worlds may do things completely different. That makes you intelligent? No, you're situationally informed. And that goes for everything else. You really don't know how to handle anything. The mental capacities of humans are pathetic and horrible. Everybody's got some sort of mental illness. Everyone's sexuality is all mixed up. We're slaves to a system. Well, this all says what? How intelligent we are that we built a system that enslaves us? That we allow hoodlums and criminals and corruption to run us? Oh boy, you, you're smart people. <laughs> you're real smart. <laughs> you know, you ain't like the animals who can survive anywhere. Yeah. Well, the point is, if you take a bear and put him in any environment similar to where he came from, he'll survive. I can take you from Los Angeles and put you in New York, and probably you're not going to survive at all. You're going to have real trouble making it. Where's your money? Where's your job? Who's going to help you? You're going to have real, real problems. Uh, and the whole idea is humans are extremely weak. Your muscle structures, pathetically. I mean, basically, anybody who's, uh, who has had any kind of pets, particularly dogs, knows how strong even a little puppy is. Even a three or four pound dog is very powerful, and you are not. Your muscle structure is pathetic. Now, why would you evolve that way? Why would you evolve weaker instead of stronger? You know, more of the other philosophies that we just don't get. But, of course, that's exactly what's happened. So none of it makes sense. Why would you lose hair on the top of your head when you kind of need it to protect yourself from the sun? So that requires you to make a hat. So the whole idea is that the human species is ignorant. It's a cunning species. It figures how to use and abuse everything for momentary satisfaction. And this, of course, is taken through our entire field. Our foods are like this. People's sexualities are like that. We have instant access for instant gratification all the time. But none of this stuff is very fulfilling or good for you. Junk foods are not good for you. Yeah, they taste good because you love that salt, fatty taste that you get from these junk foods. And a little bit of it's fine. We all love that stuff. But we love that stuff because society has told us to love it. If you go off of salt and sugar for even a couple of weeks and then you eat something, it's, ugh, what is this salt? It's a condition, and it's a stupid condition. And now everything can kind of be in its junk, low-level form, instantaneously uh, accessed on the net. So, um, and of course, this is something that mankind has always been looking. And now it's going into a total uh, sexuality where people's entire sex lives are basically online. And then this is added to by some reality. So everybody can isolate themselves. And this causes some really serious mental problems. That's intelligent? Well, what have we done that's intelligent? What can we point to in this entire world, which is a great functioning system? And the bottom line, there really isn't any. We have two great needs, energy and health, and both of those, we really don't have any societies or even any technologies that are used en masse to provide those in clean, pure, inexpensive ways. Uh, yet we have it, but corruption stops it. We have hydrogen power. Nobody uses it. I believe Iceland has uh, moved over to that in the bizarre uh, place that it is and so isolated. I guess they can get away with it with their tiny population. But the bottom line is, is that the world who needs it the most, including the super rich Chinese, don't use it because the world banks tell them not to. They're highly corrupt and they'll pay those people off. And obviously that's the case. They want coal. Coal? Oh, they're an intelligent group, aren't they? So the humans do absolutely nothing to do that. Now, we spend all of our money on killing other humans protecting ourselves from other humans. These are where the major costs of life go into. So, is that intelligent? Well, that's absurd. 
trillions and trillions and trillions, hundreds of trillions, I don't even know what's after trillions, have been spent on militaries from the beginning of time. And basically what's happened is that the entire society is based on the fact you've got to have a military. If you've read recent history, and this means in the last three, four thousand years, it's nothing but hoodlums coming up uh, from the steps, from on their horses with bows into civilized places, the Huns. Uh, all of these people came up and murdered the people who had things. So uh, the bottom line is, is that's how it's worked. So, uh, and that's how the world works. is a domination society that enslaves the rest. And we have that today. So the whole idea is it's not any different. That certainly is not a smart way to go. If the entire world took all the money that they were spending on uh, military and put it into things that we needed like free energy and health, we'd be living forever right now. Or at least we'd have a good shot at it. I'm not sure that humans have the capacity to think to that great level, but there's certainly an awful lot of depressed and um, technologies. There's also a lot of people that never have a chance to get into colleges, don't have the funds to do things, can't do the research they want. And they are affected by evil society and blocked from doing things. Now, this organization has similar problems. We need money to do research, which I have un been unable to do for many, many years, to break into things at a higher understanding. Uh, but it's not. And they're infiltrators, as even recently happened, with a traitor scum in this organization, as typical. But this happens in all organizations. You got two people together, the third one is infiltrator. So this is the kind of um, uh, corruption that is involved in society by the controllers and those people who really are the worst of the worst, uh, who empower this giant uh, machine. And giant machines are just that, and they have billions of wheels in there, and those billions of wheels keep the bigger wheel going. So to blame the guy at head on the top is kind of ignorant. So, is that intelligence? Now, this is what we built. We built this sewer, disgusting, illogical, corrupt society, and we're so intelligent. And the ancients, of course, couldn't have done anything, and they didn't work together. Of course they worked together. Entire societies have worked together for uh, hundreds of years to create things. They also had uh, smart ways of doing things because they couldn't rely on primitive electricity and the crap. And, and we think they're primitive because they didn't leave you know, plastic behind. They didn't leave some, um, some sort of technology that could be readily identified as having some particular value. So we think they're stupid. Secondly, let's get back to the animal question. Now, animals are very smart and very intelligent and um, are cognizant beings. And of course, we want to think that they're stupid so that we can murder and eat them for no reason whatsoever. We don't need protein. We have beings. And even that we should be able to eventually transfer into energetic beings and take all the energy that we need right from the sun, where we don't have to kill anything, fruits, vegetables, or anything else. Now, if we were smart, we would have been there already. That's where advanced society is going. Now, animals need to uh, know everything that they need to know to survive in their environment. Some animals know when they're sick what plants to eat. Do you know that? Now, I go on the internet and look up, uh, you know, pimples. What do I take for pimples? So the whole idea is that um, most people know nothing. And, of course, the internet is helpful, but how many people use it for anything else uh, but uh, deviant practices or fun practices? Let's watch comedies. So the whole idea is that uh, animals are perfectly balanced, extremely intellectual, but they, uh, and they know everything, not only on the physical reality of what herbs to eat, but they sense things. They work in as psychic beings. 90% of what an animal does is psychically based. Another thing that science wouldn't admit to, because that would make you inferior, you physicists. So the whole idea is, and you are inferior, because you're not working in the sensing, understanding realm. And until we get into an area where we sense based on higher understanding, now, animals have higher understanding. They're forced that what they sense has to be correct because their survival is based on it. 
So if you're taking in quote, and I hate to use the term, but uh, we need to talk in things that people understand. Um, if you take in things on a psychic consciousness level and transfer that into the real world, well, it better be right. And you better be accessing the streams of empowerment that work. If you don't, you don't exist. And the fact that their animals exist and able to do what they can do shows the high state of psychic uh, development they're at. They're bringing in energies and informational fields that tell them what to do so that they can survive. Plain and simple. And we see this from really creatures that can't be killed easily. And actually, we have lost the battle with animals. Um, we are killing bigger animals just because of our cunning. Uh, is a gun a great instrument? It's a metal tube that you put a little saltpeter at the end with a little stone inside. Um, it's very effective. Is it advanced? Well, not really. It's pretty primitive. That's everything we have is pretty primitive. And every technology we have today is really something that was invented like 50, 60 years ago that's now kind of in the common. And now we're using computer programs to, uh, to access large streams of information that kind of do one thing or another. I'm not sure what any benefits of these things are. It's certainly nice to not have to, but uh, to trug down to the bank, you can do your banking from your home and your computer. Is that a, that's just a convenience. So I'm not sure. We all love convenience because we want to have more free time, but is it a necessity? I mean, people, except in the last 30, 40 years, have been doing all the old stuff. They didn't have cell phones. They used regular phones. They went to the bank. They went to a store and picked something out. Uh, these are all the things, and a lot of this will never, ever change because you have to take care of things directly because there are problems. So um, is this smart that we caused a whole bunch of complications? Well, Animals don't do that. Animals recognize themselves, particularly very high-level animals like elephants and other things, which work on extreme sensing abilities. They recognize each other. They've seen them 50 years ago. This has been proven. So when we go on and on with all these animals that have good and bad traits, they certainly are nowhere away ignorant. But if you're an animal and you're big, well, you're a big target. A lot of those little metal rods with stones in them are going to affect you. Um, you're not going to be able to hide from a cunning group of people who will surround you. No, it's just not going to happen. It's a, it's a primitive, uh, cunning way of doing things. And mankind has always been cunning. They haven't went one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano with the tiger. You'll get 50 guys with spears. So the whole idea is that's the way it is done. So it's not has anything to do with it. That's cunning. And uh, to use uh, what is readily available in front of you, even when it's toxic, like oil. Oil used to be found on the top of the surface of the ground, people. I don't know if people understand that. So it was nobody ever used it because they couldn't figure out. It's toxic. It's, what the hell would you do with this? So the whole idea is that um, we then figured out um, that we could use that, even though it's very toxic and difficult to use. It has some good uses, but most of it in mass is bad. Well, let's do that. Let's make an internal combustion engine. Now, why was that done to begin with? Well, first of all, that wasn't done. The first cars were electric, but oil was so cheap and created such a giant industry that we converted over to a toxic, polluting, murderous, uh, murder-creating technology. Smart thought. This thing how smart that is. We can kill each other and some guys make a lot of money. <laughs> These guys are smart. So this is what, of course, we get into. So, um, thanks. Animals are stupid because they haven't done that. Well, first of all, you have to have a certain structure as well. An elephant who is far smarter and a dolphin than a human by leaps and bounds doesn't have hands. Without hands, without standing up straight, you can't do anything. Only a certain kind of flexible animals can do that. Some birds use tools. Why? Because they can hold it in their beak and they can hold it in their claws. This is how it works. So it's the structure of man that's allowed to take his cunning and do something with it. But the cunning has been 100% destructive. The cunning, which may have been a good survival tool for a period of time, you do what you have to to get to a point where you can do things better. Well, that never happened. Why? 
because mankind has the ultimate problem when you have a big kanagan with no consciousness connected to it. Corruption. And corruption causes everything. And corruption is in many, many forms. I mean, we all know what corruption is. People talk about it all the time. I got stories. I used to just let it roll off my back, too. Um, I talked to people. And they said, oh, yeah, this happened, that happened. I talked to a person who owned an occult shop in San Francisco, and they had to pay off the vice squad uh, who came in there. You know, San Francisco, hippy dippy land in California. You know, it's a city full of corrupt people. It has your leaders of corruption, your politicians, and your police who milk everybody else. In um, Russia, they call the police the werewolves because they prey on you. So the whole idea is that's the way it goes. So I let that kind of roll off my back. And you, you listen to that and you say, well, gee, what is that? I, just, I don't want to take that into my conscience. You're brainwashed not to fight corruption. And I heard this from many other people, a dentist who a union approached them and wanted huge kickbacks to give him to give him all their business. So we'll send you $10,000, but we expect five of that to uh, go back to us. So this is what happens with the corruption of it. Um, so there's always a corruption factor, and this has never been any different. There's been corruption noted in ancient documents up to modern. So it's interesting that Armstrong Custer... Um, mentioned how corrupt U.S.'s S. Grant's administration was and how they used to cheat the Indians and how you, the soldiers were required to buy from certain people. And this all added up to the fact that their money then went was kicked back to the Grant's administration. So it goes on and on and on. And since this has never been stemmed, and since we don't spend our time taking care of corruption so the system can work, because the systems are put in and they all make sense, and there's laws against all of this, because it's just understandable, so people did that. But laws don't have any value if they're never enforced. I mean, we it's gotten to such an extent now and to a large extent has always been that way, but we have people that represent our government that murder people in the street. They shoot them. They step on their necks. They're called police, and they murder people in the street. And none of these people that I've ever seen that have been murdered in the street were any bad guys. They were not threats whatsoever. But, of course, that's how corrupt systems work. They take out people who aren't threats, and they are, are um, uh, generally, they're either paid off or they work with the people who are threats. Plain and simple. So this is what happens, and everybody's, okay, presidents don't care. Nobody does anything about the murder of the citizens in the streets. I mean, this is the kind of things that started the original colonials to, revel, uh, uh, to revolt against the uh, British who were doing this kind of nasty stuff. They saw the Americans as nothing more but a bunch of hillbilly animals that they could do whatever. This is very typical and still goes on. This is a very typical British-Germanic problem. Brits being Germans, uh, and have this kind of uh, sociopathic attitude. The Brits are notorious for this. They kind of do the, isn't Simon Cowell kind of a little nasty Brit? People think he's funny. Well, I don't think he's funny. He's a rude, nasty Brit German. And that's very typical of the Brits in general. And people have somehow think that everybody is Sherlock Holmes or this silver-tongued devil that the Brits have a command of the language if you can consider horrible slang that changes from street to street. But the whole idea is that uh, this is what people look at and this is the problem that we run into. So nothing ever changes. Corruption gets worse, and it doesn't matter how blatant it is. People are doing these things because they get away with it. Russia has five prisons just for their police officers. Yeah, well, we should have 50. So the problem is, is that as long as we allow these corrupt type of people to run things, and it's not just them, it's all the politicians, they're all bought off. Uh, and even in America, they allow politicians to own stock in companies, apparently, that they then vote for uh, the assist of that company. There's all sorts of things that they've allowed to happen to further corruption. Now, 
once corruption stops, we can start working on the reality of the faulty thinking we have, which is based on a whole bunch of stuff that makes no sense to us. Science people are quoting people from 2,000 years ago. It's just absurd. Or 400, 300 years ago that go to their other heroes of science. I mean, all these heroes of science are a bunch of really screwed up, and it's all hundreds of years ago. So what you're telling us is there's nothing that modern science can offer us. We have to go back to Newton. It was three, four hundred years ago. We have to go back to Einstein a hundred years ago, whose information probably came from hundreds of years before that. So we have nothing that we have come to a realization within recent time. And let's give these egg-headed fools a little lead way. So tell me, you know, and you know, when it comes to science and particularly now, well, what have you found in the last 20 years? What are your conclusions knowing everything in a bigger picture? Because, you know, Newton had a very tiny um, informational source to draw on, and he invented mathematics to prove his hypotheses, his theories, excuse me. Like all scientists do, by the way, when the math don't work out, well, it does work out. You really, you put a jibber here and a jibber there, and yeah, two plus two equals five, and I tell you shall. And this is the kind of ignoramus thinking. That's why nothing has ever progressed. While we're able to figure things out because of technology, because we can look at them under microscopes, we can feel. But a lot of things have still never, ever been seen. We don't know what an atom looks like. We don't have any of this stuff. We have pictures of it, which we think. And we also have to wonder that all this that these particular physicists like Neil deGrasse Tyson like to say, we got it all figured out. We just have to put the dots together. Well, let's see that happen, buddy boy. You don't have it figured out. We have no solutions to anything. And this goes, you know, and the mass corruption is just horrendous. That has caused us problems. We don't have technologies of rockets to get to the space station. We use Russian stuff. Well, they had real rocket scientists because they kicked all the Nazis out and put their own people in. We kept the Nazis in and we're where we are today because of that filth thinking. So the whole idea is that we have to understand that. We couldn't go to the moon today that we did 40 years ago because we don't have the technology to do it any longer. It's amazing how we forget technology. You think we would have tripled the technology to understand how to do it because we did it one time in 1969 and several times after that. But we can't do it today because we don't have the budget to do it. We're looking at Mars when we should be on the moon and have basically bases up there. That's our practice ground. That's the kindergarten to go everywhere else. Not that I believe in going everywhere else either. But corruption has stopped that and so many other things. And of course, the moon is a very mysterious place where they like to tell you how boring it is. Well, I'm not sure how boring it is. I know how corrupt it is. So other people have. The Chinese have landed there and even planted plants there to see if they can grow and other things, something we should have done 50 years ago or at least 40 years ago. What's going on? <laughs> um, so... The corruption that is so prevalent everywhere has taken what that filthy human low consciousness, basically stupid species, and because we're able to be cunning in groups and have hands and feet to basically build weapons of destruction, because we really haven't built anything else, that we dominate, and that part of that domination is to make sure we classify everything else as inferior even though we live off of them we live off the animals the planet the water and everything else and we take no care of it whatsoever now i don't know how we can possibly think that that is intelligent we ought to start naming how stupid the human race is and how dangerous they are and start admitting it and all this money spent on physics and all the other stuff trying to figure things out is worthless we've got to start doing things we have to start creating things that are positive. We have an entire planet that is infected with pollution and it's not getting any better. And we don't hold international criminals up to the standards we need to, like the Chinese who dump everything in the oceans and really don't care. 
We have plastic is every single fish in the ocean. It's horrific. Plastic is a horrible invention that the genius human mind. Secondly, what is the human mind really? Well, let's talk about the destructive powers as a final note here of the human mind or the human species would do that. What would you perfect? How to live longer? You'd spend all your money on killing the next guy. Oh, that's smart. So, of course, you're forced to do that because the guy next to you is a total lunatic. The problem is we haven't killed enough people and we haven't really done the job right like they used to do in ancient times where they would level towns and salt the earth and everything else. This is how you stop societies from coming back and destroying you. Um, but have we been done at that? You know, let's talk about the genius animals out there. And there are very genius animals out there. One of them is called a parasite. The other one's called a virus and funguses. Funguses created this planet. Funguses came out, ate the rocks, and then turned the soil there. Pretty intelligent, isn't that? Man wouldn't do that. Man would try and figure out how I eat the rocks. Can I break it up? Well, we only have a few rocks. If we break them up and eat them, then we're going to be in trouble. Okay, I'll break the rocks and eat them. Forget tomorrow. I'll find somebody else I can kill. So this is it. Now, parasites go from one host to the other. And, of course, humans mimic that. But they're not too good at it because parasites have taken over the humans, just as fungus has and just as uh, viruses have. They're unstoppable. There's no way to fight them. They are the supreme intelligence, and they will be here. Those non well, they don't have vertebrae, though. They ain't smart. They don't got a peanut on the top of their neck. These species are just stupid. Stupid? They've been here, they created everything, they've been here, and they will be here to the end of time. Uh, as soon as the human race is done, which I hope is sooner than later, um, all of these things will come back. You're not going to destroy the Earth totally. It will then go into hibernation for a billion years and get rid of the sewer that was here. So this is how intelligent. Humans won't do that. Humans will disappear. So uh, all your artificiality will come to an end because you're not going to be able to think your way out of it. So um, because you don't have that capacity. The super intelligence is a parasite. It gets into your mind. It tells you, I don't think, though. It's got no brain. It's a perfect functioning machine. Fungus, parasites, and viruses. Nothing stops them. And it never will. There's nothing that the uh, inferior, horribly evil, corrupt human mind will ever come up with. And if they do, somebody will stop it and destroy it because they are making money off the suffering of others. Again, that gets also to the issue of the innate nature of human beings. And why is this? And the innate nature of human beings is that they are evil to the core, rotten, stinking filth. There's nothing that you could argue to that fact. Not There's absolutely nothing that we can hold up in this world to say that how great humans have done with anything. We're still trying to figure out everything, and there's generally a huge price tag to go on that. So you're a scientist, and you want to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and uh, if you don't have the money, if you're a sick person, you don't even get anything. You die in the streets, or they put you in some place where they can't see you so you can die. Interesting. None of these people, or I should say very few people, do anything to help out anybody. I've never had a teacher help me. I've never had a doctor help me. I've never had anybody help me in any way whatsoever. And I think I'm just an honest person. You haven't had it either. Nobody's extended anything past the dollar bill to me. And all these things that people talk about and the privileges of this and that, well, it's certainly I never had that. And I don't think most people have. I've seen most people's lives and they've, uh, they are parasitical to other people. I know somebody who lived with his mommy and daddy and had a lot of money in the bank and he lived to be 60 uh, staying with them. Well, you know, that's not 
Uh, I guess his parents helped a little bit of money, but this is not being helped by society. Uh, nobody comes out and helps anybody, and they're always uh, affected by corruption. Somebody's going to tell you not to help that person because they are black, um, whatever, Asian, whatever it is it may be, or they don't fit into society because the controllers, and they'll be more than happy to do that. So the problem is, is the people in control haven't wiped out the evil, and mankind is evil. Every evil empire that's ever started in this society, or at least let's say in the last 100 years, still exists. Certainly, we can't say how wonderful the uh, Soviet Union was. Uh, we certainly can't say that. Now, uh, Japan, Germany, all the fascists are still out there and still running the world just like the Russians are. And certainly the great experiment of the United States, which never really has been a free... It's all basically been run by rich people from day one. These rich uh, Europeans, basically, of um, uh, most of them were British Germans who came in here and spread their filth and destroyed the United States. But we have given that up for greed, as everyone has given up everything for greed. Not to survive, but for greed. And there's a big difference. There's a big difference between getting by and even comfortably and having excess luxuries while other people suffer. So, um, this is all part of the reality that's out there. And um, we need to face that as the ignorant, corrupt species we are that is intrinsically, it's built within our being that we are evil. I'm going to go into this in other lectures, but the bottom line is that people, when they are bored, when they are fat and sassy, don't create great things. They commiserate in the evil energy that is part of this reality. Now, this brings in a whole interesting question of, is the evil that's here, was it created? Is it part of you? Is it, uh, is it something in the atmosphere? Well, there's something really going wrong with the human species, that they are intrinsically evil to a very high degree. This is not something we can just say people are kind of not nice. No, you're talking about people who torture, murder, and destroy everything in their wake, particularly the inhumanity to humans. Uh, humans destroy, as they destroy animals on the planet, well, they destroy each other in the same cruel, horrible way. Because after all, you're already destroying the earth you live off of and the animals that are on it. You're murdering and torturing them by eating them. So this goes on and on and on. So the human condition is ultimately very, very evil. Now, wh why is this? Well, we don't really know, but we certainly can't look back at philosophers that were 100 years ago, 200 years ago. We've got to be spending time thinking what is happening here. What is triggering within the human consciousness this evil perversion that not only wants to destroy everyone around you, but yourself in general? We have a horrible suicidal condition that we think we can rape the earth forever, but we're going to make it, and you don't care about anybody else. I mean, the absurdity of this. People don't want to build a utopia. They don't want things good. They want to put their money into military-industrial complexes to fulfill their ultimate urge, which is to murder and to destroy Let's rip something down. This is exactly what's happening here. Let's burn it. Let's beat it. And this is how people work. And then they try and justify this by being within their society or society tells them some person. And they justify this. But the bottom line is they're involved in destruction and evil constantly. And we all know what that is, and we don't have to be trained differently. It's amazingly that we want to have books and religions to tell us how what we're supposed to do when it's just common built into you. It's in your consciousness that you're not supposed to do the things that the Ten Commandments says you're not supposed to do, which certainly isn't new. It goes back 50,000 years. So all of this is part of it. So people need to wake up. Mankind is the most evilest, stupidest, self-destructive a species in the universe. But I'm assuming there are similar types uh, to this planet as there are similar echo types as well. Even though you got to remember the Earth is pretty unique. There ain't many planets like this out there. And whatever life is out there is probably very different than ours. 
And that means they've evolved very differently. They have different chemicals in their brains. They live on different substances. But we can probably understand that extraterrestrial societies are probably just as scummy as we are. So think about that. Until next time.